Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham, and today we're going to talk about creating data templates in WPF. A data template is a snippet of XAML that allows you to provide a visualization for your objects in your application. So let's start with a simple class called person. We've defined a few properties here, first and last name, age, and gender for a person. So this would be uh, our business object that lives in our application. And we're going to go ahead and, and show this object on screen in a WPF application. So first, let's take a look at our main window. And this is the XAML for our main window. We've simply got a content control here. And the content property, we're going to bind to a property of our main window called person1. And looking at the code behind here for main window, uh, we've created a public person object called person1. And then in the constructor, we're just going to initialize person1. We'll set some of the values here. We'll, we'll set the gender, the age, and the first and last name. And then we'll set the data context of this main window to be its own code behind. So now the front end XAML can bind to any properties that we define here in the main window. So now that we've got person one defined in our front end again, we're binding this content controls content to that person one property. Now if we go ahead and run this as is, what you're going to see is that the default implementation of a data template in WPF is simply to call toString on my object. So it says namespace is called creating data templates dot person. That's the best visualization that WPF can provide if, if we're not going to tell it how to visualize it, visualize it ourselves. Um, so to just to, to prove that that is what's happening here, if we were to provide an override to toString on the person object, and we were to do something like this, where we say, let's override this and provide a string that has the first name, a space, and then the last name. Now, if we go ahead and run this again, you'll notice that our data template now has changed and it's actually using our overridden to string and it says Jane Doe. Okay, that's not creating a data template, but that is showing that, that what will happen in WPF if you don't provide your own data template is for it to simply call the to string on your object. What we'd really like to do is take full control of the visualization of this person object and do that directly in XAML. So in order to do that, we want to create a data template for this uh, for this object. Now we can do that on the content control directly. We can say content control dot content template, and the content template it expects is a data template object. So we'll create a data template, and now within this data template, we can do any styling that we want to do. We can create any number of visual elements. So maybe what we'll create is simply a text box and set its text. And now we can data bind the text property to any of the public properties on the person object. So our content controls content property is bound to a person object. Now inside the content control, it's data template. It, the data context for this data template will be the person that's bound to the outer content control here. So any of the binding we do in here now is looking at the person object directly. And let's set, say, the font size to 15 so we can see a difference here. Now when we run it, you'll see that what's showing for our data template now is simply the first name of the person and it's stylized as a, a larger font at font size 15. So now we have full visual control of how we style our objects and we can do other things in here like maybe what we want to do is create a stack panel and in that stack panel we want to put the first name and then underneath it we want to put the person's age and we want to do the age in a smaller font. So now we're creating our visual representation of our person object and we're doing that completely in XAML. And you can see now we've got the first name and the age now goes underneath. So now we have full control of this visualization here in XAML, but what happens if we end up putting a second content control? Let's change our main layout panel from a grid to a stack panel so we can stack these on top of each other. So I'll go ahead and change the top to stack panel, change the bottom to stack panel. Now what happens if I put another content control and I set its content equal to the same person? Well now if we run this, what you'll see is that the first one we get our XAML snippet, Jane, with the first name and the age underneath. The second one it says Jane Doe, but that's because we've provided a toString in our object. So, and again, 
if we take this two string off just to illustrate the point a little bit further if I come in here and I actually get rid of this two string override and then I run this app again you'll see that the second one is now back to the default implementation which is the namespace and then the name which is the two string on my object so now if we want to go ahead and share our data templates what we need to do is we need to move that data template out from inside just this content control we need to make it into a resource that's reusable so we'll go ahead and highlight this data template and we're going to cut the data template from here and I'm going to move up to the window and inside the window here I'm going to create a resources section where I can store reusable bits of XAML that are in context for this window. So now I can take it and just paste my data template there and when it's in the resources collection I have to give it a key. So I'm going to call this the person template. And now down here on my content control instead of setting the content template in long form like that I can say content template oops, content template and now I can reference the resource through static resource person template. And now I can use that in multiple places. So now I can have it used on both content controls and reuse the same snippet of XAML, referencing the same resource. And now when I run that, you can see now I've get the visualization the same in both places. It says Jane 24 in both places. And now if I were to make a change to the shared data template to say change the font size from 15 to 25, and let's change the font uh, style to um, italics. Now when I do that and run it, now you'll see that it takes effect for both objects. Now my data template visualization is reused. All right, and that's it for data templates for now.